Hello everyone again. Um, thanks for watching another video. And in today's video I'm going to tear down the movement from the Seiko 44 uh, 9990. So it's basically the same as the 4402 which I uh, tore down previously. Um, there's a few changes on it. Um, so notably you'll note that there is uh, there's no date on this one. Uh, whereas the 4402 has a date on it. And we're just at the moment just looking at uh, one of the capsules there, which is on the, uh, I think that's on the escape wheel. Uh, so run on the um, on the dial side at the moment or calendar side, but there's no calendar on this. And we're just removing the uh, the winding wheel there. And it. This uh, this watch actually had some pretty tight screws on it, so you're going to see um, the movement go to the side of the camera a few times, just so I can uh, uh, take them off without uh, without damaging them. I currently don't have the best uh, camera setup, so uh, I kind of have to do everything at an angle, which makes life a bit difficult. Now, just removing that there, you'll see that that wheel is a bit unusual in that uh, it actually has the post. Uh, built into the wheel and uh, it's just a, a jewel hole in the plate and just removing the uh, little intermediate wheel there and uh, that was really sticky so as you can see I took a little bit to get off just because it had some dry oil and stuff in it And you can see the construction of this this movement's quite simple. However, they are sort of a chronometer grade uh, chronometer uh, grade movement. And as you can see, I've just taken that off for a sec because it was extremely tight. And uh, yeah, just removing that um, that little plate there. And you'll see we've got one of those uh, Shepherd Crooks uh, springs there, which uh, holds the yoke on, or uh, springs to the yoke. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put some uh, Rodico over the top while I remove it. So if it decides to ping, it really hasn't got far to go. And yeah, a little bit fiddly doing this at an angle. There we go, and we've removed that. And now we've just got the setting lever and the yoke left. So that's the uh, the yoke coming off there. And the setting lever. Now this is this watch has an old style setting lever on it, so it's actually got a screw which screws through from the uh, the train side into the setting lever. Now I'm just going to remove the cannon pinion. I'm not going to remove the uh, die fix or the die shock settings on camera because it's just way too difficult. And we're going to turn it over and we're going to see the uh, the train side there. These are actually a really nicely finished movement, so you'll see some high polished surfaces there. And you'll see that it's actually very similar to the 4402, but uh, the main difference is that the you can see there the uh, the large hacking lever, which kind of looks like um, a hockey stick or something like that. Uh, quite often on these watches, that's actually missing because it's quite delicate and prone to breaking. Um, so what's usually happened is that they've broken in the past or corroded, and someone simply removed it. But in this case, it's present, and uh, that wheel that it um, connects to, which is on top of the fourth wheel, uh, that's a pull, uh, a pull wheel. So the way that uh, hacking lever works is it's got a little tooth that uh, digs into the pull wheel to stop the movement when you're uh, 
setting. And I'm just trying to loosen off the um, loosen off the uh, set lever screw there. And in this case, that actually broke. Um, so I don't know if it's obvious there, but you can turn that all day and it'll keep turning. And I had to find a replacement for that. These are actually a little bit tricky to work on with the keyless works because they're they're quite integrated. So it, they're actually fairly difficult to take off. So I'm just going to remove the balance now because I really don't want to damage that. Uh, if I damage that, basically, uh, yeah, I'm going to have a have a bad time trying to find another one. And the screws were excessively tight. The screws on these are different to, for example, uh, 6119 or 6139 or something. So they all have uh, flat heads and they're all very highly polished. They're overall a better quality screw than what's used on the, uh, the lower end movements. These movements actually have a fairly large balance as well, which uh, I think at the time was the uh, the prevailing uh, uh, trend behind the higher movements was a big balance. That changed later on. The uh, the 52 uh, series chronometers have a very small balance. And we're just removing that there. And you can see there the pallet cock and the pallet fork. And there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of the perlage on the plate, not very much, just a little bit. Only where it's visible. And just getting a shot there of the highly polished surfaces. Just removing the uh, the ratchet wheel there. And they have a f these ones have a fairly traditional style setup. Um, so it's the same sort of thing that you'd see on a Swiss movement. Now just having a look at this watch here, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll see under under the ratchet wheel there's just a huge amount of oil and we're going to see that on the plate as well. So this watch was just very heavily over oiled and there was oil all the way through the movement. Um, you can see that right there on the plate so it's a little bit yellowish and uh, you can see it shiny and it was just everywhere. And that was all the way through the gear train as well. So I'm not quite sure why the oil was everywhere. Um, either someone used a very thin oil inside the barrel or uh, they might have done the old trick with uh, squirting some oil down the down the uh, crown tube to try and get it running again, which I've seen dozens of times. I hope that wasn't the case and it was just uh, a thin oil used in the, uh, in the barrel. The problem with using a thin oil in the barrel is it tends to migrate outside of the barrel quite easily and just ends up everywhere. And I think, yeah, we can see a little bit more oil under there as well. Now I'm just going to remove that plate and we'll be able to see the barrel. It was a little bit stuck as well just because the oil had sort of congealed and you can see there there's more oil under the plate. It's just everywhere. So yeah the oil had got in um, where the screw inserts are, it actually just congealed in there, which made the plate quite hard to take off. 
and that's the uh, the winding pinion there and you can see the barrel now the barrel is actually on these is jeweled uh, on the barrel and also on the barrel arbors so there's literally four jewels um, on the barrel and barrel arbors it's probably overkill but um, it certainly looks good I'm just removing the pallet cock there and hopefully this will come off a bit easier than uh, than some of the other parts and now we're going to remove the pallet fork and the final train bridge. I'm just going to tap that off now. Again the screws were quite tight here so I've just taken it off to the side just to make sure that I don't damage the screws or mark the plate or anything like that. Now what I'm not going to do on camera which you'll see in a sec is remove the little pull wheel that's on top of the fourth wheel that needs a gear puller to take it off and uh, that's just a little bit too, too tricky to do on camera but uh, the gear puller is basically a little uh, it's, it's the same as a um, as a hand removing tool except it's got uh, three teeth on it rather than the, the little blades and it's the same sort of thing that you'd use to remove the, um, the fourth wheel on a, uh, a one of the older Rolex movements like the uh, 1530 so I'm just removing that plate there I'm trying to do it gently so I don't scratch it so I'm just getting a screwdriver and just very little, lightly levering it there's probably oil everywhere which is congealed in the um, screw inserts which is making it difficult and that bridge is finally off so you can see there the pull wheel connected to the fourth wheel and you can see some more die fix settings there and there's the third wheel and we're just taking out the barrel You can see some chunks of stuff there as well. Now I haven't done a teardown of the case on this because it's basically the same as the 4402. So if you want to see how the case goes together, just have a look at that. And there's the, um, the escape wheel and the center wheel. And now you have the whole movement torn down. So I hope you enjoyed having a look inside that movement. Um, certainly there's not a lot of info about them out there, but hopefully this should shed a little bit more light on these. And uh, look forward to another video soon. Thanks for watching.